The following information comes from the essay titled Climate Change Summary at GuyMcPherson.com. It was last updated August 2nd, 2016, which is a long time ago in the face of abrupt climate change. This video summarizes self-reinforcing feedback loop number 28 in the essay with a focus on peer-reviewed papers and assessments from national level governments. It only takes one feedback loop to re ensure the irreversibility of climate change. And this is number 28 that I've presented in this space. Small ponds in the Canadian Arctic are releasing far more methane than expected based on their aerial cover, according to a paper in the November 13th, 2013 edition of PLOS One. This is the first of several freshwater ecosystems releasing methane into the atmosphere, as reviewed in the March 19th, 2014 issue of Nature, and subsequently described by a large-scale study in the April 28, 2014 issue of Global Change Biology. Release of methane from these sources in the Arctic and Greenland, according to the May 20, 2012 issue of Nature Geoscience, quote, imply that in a warming climate, disintegration of permafrost, glaciers, and parts of the polar ice sheets could facilitate the trans transient expulsion of carbon-14 depleted methane trapped by the cryosphere cap." End quote. The mechanism underlying methane release in these systems is poorly understood. If sunlight drives the process, as suggested by a paper in the August 22, 2014 issue of Science, then amplification is expected over time as ponds and lakes are increasingly exposed, and amplification inf implies acceleration or an exponential growth in methane. Water bodies within Africa's interior are adding significantly to the overall release of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, according to a paper in the July 20th, 2015 online edition of Nature Geoscience. Specifically, quote, total carbon dioxide equivalent greenhouse gas emissions are about 0.9 petagrams of carbon per year, equivalent to about one quarter of the global ocean and terrestrial combined carbon sink, end quote. And that's a lot. Large water bodies beneath deserts could profoundly worsen the situation. According to a paper published in the July 28, 2015 issue of Geophysical Research Letters, a large carbon sink or pool lies beneath the Tarim Basin in Xinjiang, China. The hidden pool of water stores, quote, more carbon than all the plants on the planet put together. While more water may sound like a good thing, researchers believe that if this carbon were to escape into the atmosphere, we would be in serious, serious trouble." End quote. Specifically, the lead author explained in an interview, quote, It's like a can of Coke. If it is opened, all the greenhouse gas will, will escape into the atmosphere. End quote. A paper in the October 29, 2015 issue of Limnology and Oceanography also addresses the issue of methane release from lakes, a write-up for the general public titled Global Warming Will Progress Much More Quickly Than Expected, Study Predicts, includes this line, quote, The findings suggest we have a vicious circle ahead of us in which the burning of fossil fuels leads to higher temperatures, which in turn trigger higher levels of methane release and further mourning further warming, end quote. This is a fine explanation for a self-reinforcing feedback loop, a vicious circle in which the burning of fossil fuels leads to higher temperatures, which in turn trigger higher levels of methane release and further warming. A study published in the November 17, 2015 issue of Nature Geoscience shows that lakes in the northern hemisphere will probably release much more carbon dioxide due to global climate changes. The investigation, based on data from more than 5,000 Swedish lakes, demonstrates that carbon dioxide emissions from the world's lakes, watercourses, and reservoirs are equivalent to almost a quarter of all the carbon dioxide produced by burning fossil fuels. Citing two recent journal articles, a paper in the November 19, 2015 issue of Yale Environment 360 concludes, quote, the world's iconic northern lakes are undergoing major changes that include swiftly warming waters, diminished ice cover, and outbreaks of harmful algae." End quote. The lakes include Lake Baikal, quote, the deepest, largest in volume, and most ancient freshwater lake in the world, holding one-fifth of the planet's above-ground water supply, 
It's a Noah's Ark of biodiversity, home to myriad species found nowhere else on Earth. End quote. Further support for the importance of streams and rivers as sources of atmospheric methane comes from a paper published in the November 2015 issue of Ecological Monographs. The headline of the write-up for the general public tells the story. Quote, Greenhouse gas emissions from fresh water higher than thought. End quote. A paper in the November 23, 2015 issue of Journal of Geophysical Research, Biosciences, found as reported in the abstract, quote, a sediment upwelling at the end of the thaw season likely contributed to these methane emissions. We suggest that, unlike wetlands, shallow, seasonally ice-covered lakes can have their highest methane emission potential in the cold season, likely dominating the spring methane release of subarctic landscapes with high lake coverage, end quote. In other words, as with methane release from the Arctic Ocean, methane release is abundant during the cold season. According to a paper in the June 16, 2016 online issue of Geophysical Research Letters, quote, our findings indicate that permafrost below shallow lakes has already begun crossing a critical thawing threshold approximately 70 years prior to predicted terrestrial permafrost thaw in northern Alaska, end quote. As reported in the December 16, 2015 issue of Geophysical Research Letters, quote, in the first worldwide synthesis of in-situ in and satellite-derived lake data, we find that lake summer surface water temperatures rose rapidly, global mean equal to 0.34 degrees C per decade between 1985 and 2009, end quote. A paper in the January 4th, 2016 online edition of Nature Geophys Geoscience finds, quote, lakes and ponds are a dominant methane source at high northern latitudes. By compiling previously reported measurements made at a total of 700 northern water bodies, the researchers have been able to more accurately estimate emissions over large scales. They found that methane emissions from lakes and ponds alone are equivalent to roughly two-thirds of all natural methane sources in the northern region, end quote. According to a paper in the February 1st, 2016 issue of Nature Geoscience, ponds less than a quarter of an acre in size make up only 8.6% of the surface area of the world's lakes and ponds, yet they account for 15.1% of carbon dioxide emissions and 40.6% of diffusive methane emissions.